Uh, so I'm Dan from Stalker. I was part of the eStart project. Um, it's an open source code developed here in Stalker. We heard a lot about the uh, snarks. I'm going to talk about a different kind of beast about snarks. Um, so on July 2018, we received a substantial two years grant from the Ethereum Foundation. I think at the time it was the largest grant uh, given by them. And we had to select the start friendly hash function and release an open source efficient start system for it. In this talk, I will talk a little bit about start, the start friendly hash function project. And uh, if, we'll time, if we'll have enough time, I'll briefly mention what else we do in start. Well, I know it's the last talk, I'll try to keep in time. So a proof system is considered to be stark if it is scalable. And by scalable, it means that uh, for computation that lasts uh, T cycles, uh, in order to generate proof, we take roughly T cycles. It is wildly linear in T. And it is verified much faster than that, exponentially faster. And here you can see a benchmark of our open source project. Um, so this is uh, the prover time in a second and the verification time in a millisecond. And this is for proving uh, this number of hash uh, invocations. So for example, proving uh, the computational integrity of a 100K rescue hash invocation, rescue is uh, the chosen hash function. It takes less than 10 seconds uh, to generate the proof and uh, takes less than three milliseconds to verify. And this is really, really fast. So that was uh, scalability. It's also a transparent system, meaning that uh, all verifier messages are random points. Uh, there is no trusted uh, setup, not per application, not even a universal uh, trusted setup as we heard in the previous talks. There is just no trusted setup. It's really a great thing to have in your uh, proof system. It is an uh, argument of knowledge, meaning that proof can only be generated uh, by party knowing uh, private inputs, not uh, just their existence. Uh, basically means that there is a, an algorithm that can extract uh, this uh, private output, an efficient algorithm. And uh, there is no public key cryptography involved in the stock protocol, uh, only very lean cryptography, basically collision resistant touch functions. Um, so it is post quantum secure. It's really fast, as I mentioned before, and it's based on the reliable trust assumption. So these are the properties of a start system. And uh, let's see what's going on inside uh, such a system. So we start with a proof of statement, something uh, along this line. I know uh, a value which satisfies an equation, uh, or I run this program, uh, and I know the secret uh, value x, which outputs some value. And an honest prover actually performs this uh, computation, so there is an execution trace. And looking uh, ahead, you know that there are going to be some constraint hiding uh, different sales values. For example, if we look at this line of the code, we know that uh, each uh, value in uh, of b value is going to be equal to uh, a cell plus one or if you look at this line uh, that uh, each a the next a equals to uh, square of uh, previous b and of course there is a constraint about uh, boundary constraint about uh, the output itself next uh, there is a series of reductions uh, the constraints of uh, are expressed as polynomial composed over the trace cells, uh, meaning that we can think of uh, each column of the execution trace as evaluation of uh, some polynomial. So we have the values and we can interpolate them. So we get uh, coefficients, we get the polynomial, and then we can uh, state the same statement as polynomial constraints. For example, each uh, value b equals to a plus one would be in a polynomial constraint, something like this, or fa is the polynomial of uh, the A call. And uh, this is, should hold over a domain. Uh, for example, in this domain, it's going to be the trace evaluation domain. Uh, here it's represented as a different power of G, where G is uh, a generator of a multiplicative group of the order of the trace length. OK, intuitively, we can see uh, where it's 
scalability kicks in, right? Because the number of constraints does not uh, correspond does not, to the length of the computation. Um, you have only one constraint for the whole tree. Next, we represent uh, each polynomial constraint as a rational function. We divide it uh, by this polynomial, uh, which vanishes on the domain where the constraint should hold. And since uh, these uh, GI values are actually roots of the polynomial constraint, we know that uh, the denominator should divide uh, the polynomial constraint. So we know that C uh, is not just a rational function, it's actually going to be a polynomial of uh, some bounded degree. And this is exactly what the, the algorithm is doing next. We do a low degree testing and uh, we verify that uh, the degree of uh, this rational function is uh, bounded. And uh, if the prover was honest, uh, so it should uh, be the case and the verifier will accept uh, such a proof, otherwise the verifier will reject uh, this proof. Okay. Um, so the reduction uh, between uh, a statement and a rational function such that uh, the statement is a, a true statement if and only if the rational function is of a boundary degree, this is a directization part of the protocol. Uh, it's just like R1CS, we use uh, algebraic intermediate representation. And the low degree, for low degree testing, we use a FRI protocol, uh, which stands for uh, first uh, read Solomon interactive auto proof of proximity. Uh, we'll talk later a bit more about the uh, read Solomon maybe. Okay. Um, so there are many parts here. And uh, if we look at the implementation, there are many components uh, in such a system. And uh, what we did in the eStar project, uh, we implemented each component in a way that uh, it is easy to replace them. Uh, and you can change the implementation if you wish to something different. Uh, let, me, let me explain it a bit better. So the elements in the trace are from a finite field. Uh, so we have a finite field implementation. And the finite field in eStar is the native field of rescue, which is uh, 62 bits long. For standards of the start protocol, we need a larger field. So we also implemented a, an extension field. Everything in SART uh, involves polynomials. And uh, as I mentioned before, we think of the, the trace as the evaluation of polynomials. So we can move uh, from evaluation to coefficient and back to evaluation. So we have uh, I, FFT and IFFT, first we are transforming the inverse. We have a uh, low degree extension, which is uh, basically evaluating the, these polynomials on a larger domain. Uh, we need this for security as well. So the low degree extension is in fact just the read Solomon code of the trace. This is why the low degree testing uh, is checking for proximity of, a, of code road. So we see if the function is a code road uh, in the code. We implement, we have a hash function, we use a Blake 2S uh, and we use it to implement medical trees and, and commitment scheme uh, on them. Uh, we have a hash chain. Uh, the hash chain is just a first uh, Shamir heuristic. Uh, it uh, simulates the interaction uh, between the prover and the verifier. So the, the system is not interactive. And the way that we implemented all of these uh, blocks is that you can replace them. For example, uh, you can write uh, your own uh, IFFT or FFT, and then uh, you, you can have even faster code. Uh, or as I mentioned, we use uh, for the underlying hash function, Blake2S. So you can plug in uh, Blake3, for example, and again, you, you can even faster, better prover. Um, that's one thing. Another thing is uh, that you don't, you, you can do with this code as an open source code, whatever you want. Um, so I mentioned the arithmetization part, which is uh, going from the statement uh, to this rational function. But if you want to write approval for a different functionality, uh, so all you have to do is just rewriting this part of the code. You don't have to do anything with the uh, heavy machinery of the low degree testing and the rest of the protocol. Um, 
Okay, what I mean the, is that there is a separation uh, between the protocol, the proven and the verifier from the statement. Specifically, the statement that we implemented in this project, in the East uh, Start project, uh, was the following statement. It's a hash chain statement. And the prover knows uh, some private inputs, such that uh, applying the, invoking the hash function over and over again on these inputs yields some outputs and the length of the computation, the number of the private inputs and the outputs are public and uh, the inputs themselves are private. And what we did in it start, the hash function is the rescue hash function. Um, okay, so let me uh, tell you a bit more about uh, the rescue function or first uh, the process of, of selecting uh, such a function. So as I mentioned before, it was a two years uh, project, uh, started in July, 2018. We had to select the start from the hash function. Um, and we did a thorough process to make sure that we picked the right hash function, uh, considering the tight schedule. Uh, two years is definitely not enough time to pick uh, such a primitive. We did our best at all uh, phases uh, we have experts uh, in their respective fields doing uh, specific parts. So it started by collecting new uh, start friendly hash candidates. Uh, even before we started this project, uh, Mimsy was already out there and uh, GMMC appeared, um, appeared independently uh, to us. Um, since the start complexity of standard hash functions like uh, SHA-203 is very large, we needed to collect new constructions uh, and we had uh, contracted two teams one team came uh, with the marvelous family of ciphers in which you have uh, Jervis and Vision in four binary fields and Pepper and Rescue, which was uh, the hash that we uh, chosen uh, over prime field. The other family uh, of ciphers was uh, the hardest Mincy family in which you have Stalker and Poseidon over binary and prime fields. The next phase, uh, we contracted the CryptoNext security company uh, to perform algebraic cryptanalysis. Um, later, uh, the next phase included uh, several points. First, uh, we had to fix specific parameters to all the constructions uh, in a manner that we can uh, compare them to each other because they are coming from uh, different families and uh, we needed a way to compare them in order to choose one. In uh, November 19, we had a start friendly hash selection committee. It was led by Professor Anne Cantor. Based on the, the committee reports, we knew that Rescue uh, was a good candidate, but still other tests had to be done. So we had another round of uh, algebraic um, Cryptanalysis again done by uh, CryptonX security. And then we have cryptanalytic efforts by expert targeted specifically at rescue. This was done by a crypto solution. Um, okay. During the, the same period of time, we also published and uh, deployed on Ethereum actually a uh, set of con contracts uh, which rewarded uh, the first, first finder of collision uh, to these candidates. Uh, we had just public challenge. The challenges uh, covered several security levels um, from 45 bits of security to 256 of bits of security. None of the uh, higher level bits of security were broken. Few of the 45 bit security challenges have been broken, but none of the higher, uh, by higher, I mean 80 and above. Okay, so now you know how we chose the rescue. Uh, I'll describe the uh, rescue function itself. So rescue hash function is a uh, rescue actually is a family of ciphers and the rescue hash function is a sponge construction based uh, on SPN substitution permutation network. It manipulates um, a state of 12 field elements. The fourth phase, eight field elements are the input, uh, two inputs, four and four. We then uh, add a constant value to each of the 12 elements. And then we apply the run permutation, uh, 
10 times, so we have uh, 10 rounds. And the state of, after applying the 10th round, uh, the first four filled elements out of it are going to be the output. So this is a high level of, uh, of the Bresky hash function. Uh, in, if you looked into each round, so each round uh, consists of two steps. Each step consists of uh, an F box. In the first uh, step, it's uh, taking the third root of the, uh, each element of the 12 elements in the state. In the second step is uh, cubing each element. Um, then it is followed by multiplying by an MTS matrix, uh, maximum distance separable matrix, which mixes elements together. At the, the end of uh, each step, we add a sub key or a constant uh, to each of the elements. Okay, um, so that concludes the East Talk part of uh, the talk. Again, uh, it was a two years project. Uh, we had to select a Spark friendly hash function and we chose rescue and then we had to implement efficient Spark prover and uh, I hope I'll convince you that uh, the prover that we implemented and uh, it is given as an open source is very efficient. Uh, just to remind, proving a 100K uh, invocation of the hash function takes less than 10 seconds to prove and it is verified in less than three milliseconds, uh, which is uh, at least for proving time, uh, I, from what I know is by far the fastest, fastest prover out there. So I'll briefly mention other stuff we did Starcore. Um, Starcore, uh, okay, we just talked about it's Stark, which is self-service. You can do whatever you want with it, uh, from uh, writing a even more efficient prover or just prove different kind of statements. We have Vidu. Vidu is a Stark-based verifiable delay function, VDF function, uh, which emits randomness and not just randomness, it's uh, trustless and unbiasable randomness uh, over mainnet. We also have uh, Spark X. This is our scalability engine. It supports both uh, fungible and non-fungible tokens, ELC20 and uh, 721. What it does, it, it processes batches of uh, trades off-chain. It then produces a Spark proof attesting to the validity of each, each batch and then uh, submits the proof to be verified on chain. Um, we demonstrated batches of 64k transactions, which means uh, about 9k TPS. Uh, again, very fast. Um, we have tailor made adaptations uh, for Diversify, which is a non custodial cryptocurrency decentralized exchange. We have one for Mutable, which is a non, which is a blockchain gaming company, the cradle, so the gun and chain. And we also demonstrated how entire subreddit the size of a Fortnite VR, it's about 1.3 million users, could be brought onto mainnet. Uh, the focus there was not on TPS, it was uh, on not choking the network. And actually when we did that, uh, we used uh, about 2.5% of the network, that's all. Uh, and we paid below average uh, block gas price, uh, about 30% below. Each transaction cost uh, 6,600 gas. Um, okay, uh, that, that's all. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to contact us, uh, you, you can do that, you're more than welcome. Uh, I'll just say that uh, the repository uh, for the open source code is here uh, and just mentioned that this is still free audit um, and the readme file and thorough documentation will be added in the coming weeks. So uh, thank you very much guys.